Manola and Sanli and Vanessa. Um, Manola, all the way from Luxembourg. And if anyone wow. here has not read any of uh, Manola's articles, they are a must. You need to read her stuff. She is an awesome writer. I can see she's laughing there. She's, <laughs> she's probably wishing that she could unmute herself and respond. But sorry, Manola, we're just going to market you and, you know, just tell people about what a great writer you are. <laughs> <laughs> so please do uh, let us know if you can um, if you can hear us. I can't see any yeses yet. Uh, you can hear me, okay, Elise. I can hear yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, all good. Okay, good. Well, welcome everybody. Let's jump right in. Um, I know there's people who can. They don't have to go into a waiting room, so they can just join along the way. Um, and I know that some of us like to just listen and some of us like to join in the chat. So please feel free to engage with both or either. But um, you'll notice that uh, Jennifer is usually doing our background tech stuff for these events, but Jennifer is very cleverly studying her MBA. So she's not doing that. So I'm very excited to be able to switch the platform onto Zoom. And uh, we're all learning new platforms and super excited to collaborate with Elise today, who Vanessa actually connected me with. Um, I think, you know, all of us in recruitment, we, we see like-minded people and we're like, hmm, these people will, will have a connection, which we absolutely did. And uh, about a week or so ago, he's happy to be a connector. That's totally fine. And so um, um, a couple of weeks ago, we thought, sure, you know, we've got so much knowledge that we want to share with people um, and so much value that we want to add and that we enjoy adding in the work we do around career transition and coaching. Um, let's pull together something that we can really share to encourage people and not just us sharing, but we'd really like to hear your tips and tricks along the way. So what we're going to be doing is going through the tips that we'd like to share, 10 tips and tricks uh, that we found really work for us and really work for other people. But we'd really like to ask you to share your tips and tricks in the chat box as we go along and at the end. So just add in your LinkedIn profile, so your link to that, and then a tip or trick so that people can, um, can hear what you have to share as well. So we're going to keep the slides going and just have one slide um, for each tip and, uh, or trick that we share, um, just to give you a little bit of visual on that, because I know otherwise Zoom can be quite overwhelming with all of the all of the little blocks. And I'm going to ask Elise to start us off. If you want to know a little bit more about us, it's, it's in the chat box. You can read it there. Um, but we've both been in the recruitment industry for over 20 years. And one age. of those people, <laughs> not just age, Elise. Luckily, there's something called, what's it, touch up my screen on Zoom. So nobody yeah. can see anybody's age. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we also actually both have a connection with DAV. I know Elise um, has worked there for a few years and I was doing some training there too. Um, but yeah, so, we, so we've got that experience that we bring to it. And, and not everyone loves recruitment, but... We still love it for, for, for the amount of years we've been in. So I'm going to let Elise Amazing. start off because there's four really good principles um, as we collaborate that she's been able to um, source and that she's going to be able to share as a foundation um, for us. So she's going to be talking about those. And from those four principles, we're going to build the different tips that we'll be sharing with you. So Elise, welcome and welcome to everybody and over to you. Thank you. And it's good to be here and look forward to the collaboration. I think from looking at some of the profiles and the chat that's been happening, I think there's a wealth of knowledge um, sitting in the session today. So I think, um, you know, when you look at my background, I'm working predominantly with job seekers. And um, I think, you know, we, we often undervaluate or underestimate the power of what LinkedIn can do for us, um, whether it be as a job seeker or whether it be to be found um, as, as a job seeker, whether it's to be networking knowledge, et cetera. And, and I came across these principles and, and I think they've really helped me and I think they've really added a lot of value to, to the clients that I work with um, because it all leads to what LinkedIn is about. I mean, LinkedIn is a professional networking tool. It's, it's there for us to 
be found if we're a job seeker, it's to look for jobs, it's about networking, it's about, it's about knowledge. Um, but at the end of the day, I think LinkedIn is a relationship tool and I, the algorithm of LinkedIn it really talks to that. Um, so when you start to understand the principles of LinkedIn and understand that it's a relationship tool, um, you know, these really resonated with me in terms of applying these principles and, and thinking about them in terms of everything that you're actually doing on LinkedIn. And, and often we think, oh, it's all about um, information. It's about being insightful, sharing what we know. But we forget that we actually also need to be interested. And that's really where it comes into the collaboration and supporting our community. It's about networking and helping fellow colleagues in, in what we actually do and in, in, in sort of whether it be if they're looking for a job or whether they're looking for informational content. So I just thought it would be you know, a great platform to use this opportunity to share these with you. Perhaps you've seen them before, maybe you're applying them, maybe you're applying some of the principles, but not all of them. Um, but I think it's a good foundation. So hopefully that will add value in terms of setting the tone of what we're wanting to cover in terms of the tips today. Jane, I don't know if you've got any comments or anything that you want to add to that in terms of um, your thoughts on that. Uh, no, perfect. I think that's, that's exact, exactly my understanding of LinkedIn, um, Elise, is that it's a platform that encourages people to learn and share about topics that people care about and build relationships. But it's a sticky platform. It wants people to stay there. It doesn't want them to just dip in and move out. That's so it. yeah, think, love to hear yeah. more about that. Yeah, and I think as you go along and, and, and the tips that you're going to, one of the tips you're going to talk about later in the presentation will really talk to this. Mm. Um, and that I think is where the activity becomes so important once you're understanding the activity. Um, there's no point in just having a profile um, and not having activity and connecting and, and, and engaging and being interesting as well as being interested in supporting your community. So mm. love it. Totally. Good. Should we should we should we have a look at and get going on on the first yeah tip let's do that let's do that I think our first tip that we wanted to share is really about your profile picture because that's the first thing that people see and I toyed with you know let me whose profile picture can I pick on and I thought okay let me just share my own and that my story behind that but I think what is most off putting on LinkedIn is if you don't have a profile picture. So I was speaking to an HR person of an, of an international firm and she was saying how she was really struggling to get the people kind of of a certain age or maturity level to be able to engage on LinkedIn and to actually put their photo on there. And she said it, it's, a, it's a struggle because job seekers and people who are interested in their organization or coming for an interview or people from the other side who are going for an interview, especially if they're millennials or Gen Zs, are going to go onto social media to see who is this person. Mm -hmm. And if there is no person there, they are suspicious. They're thinking, yeah. why do you not have a photo? What are you hiding? Who are you scamming? So firstly, it's important to have a photo. And I was actually coaching a talent acquisition specialist recently and she was really wanting to be able to grow in her role. And our first step was looking at this and saying, you don't have a photo. That means that people who, you know, as you're advertising or as you're engaging, people are gonna think, who is this person? So super, super important to have a photo. The next thing to think about with your photo is something you may be familiar with called the first impressions bias. So I don't know if you've heard of that, it's a very known bias in interviews or in life in general. But what it says is that for all of us, when we meet somebody, our brain makes a judgment on that person within the first five seconds of meeting them. And after that, our brains actively seek out information to confirm the judgment we've already made. So if you think about what you have time to do in that first five seconds. And, and even as we were sharing this event, we were saying people will likely make a judgment on whether to engage further with your profile or not on LinkedIn within three seconds. And the mm. first thing they're gonna look at when they land on your page 
is your photo. So firstly, have a photo. Secondly, your photo needs to be able to, now we can't prevent people being biased, but we can play bias to our favor. So people want to connect. They want to feel like there's a human connection, especially in our world of social media. So that means that your eyes need to be visible. So a headshot where your head takes up 60 to 80% of your little circle there. People need to be able to see your eyes. So especially even if you wear glasses, be careful that they're not reflecting so that people can't see your eyes. And don't be, there was a group I, I was training recently and they'd all had these beautiful professional photos done, but they were all woo, way over there. <laughs> and so most of their profile photo was beautiful surroundings with a little spot in the corner. So people want to be able to see you face forward, smile, look positive. There was someone I was speaking to the other day and I met her on LinkedIn and we had a virtual coffee as we all do in COVID. And um, I said, sure, so-and-so, you, you look nothing like your profile photo, if I can just say. And she was like, sure, we are. No, I had that 20 years ago, but oh, I really don't like photos. I was like, you know, uh, it's, it's actually important that there's a connection and there's an authenticity yeah. there. And um, we, we struck up a good connection and we had a bit of background. So we had enough rapport for me to also say to her, you know what, you're in a profession and in a role where you want to connect with people and make them feel safe. But her photo was like this. She was staring down at people with a very serious look on her face. And I was like, it's gonna be a little hard for people to feel like you're approachable. So that's something else to consider when you have your photo. And I think um, what Elise is going to touch on just now, which is also super important, is your banner behind your photo. So I put my banner there just so you can see. So I had this photo done. Then I had another one, a friend who's a photographer. We do this kind of trade swap thing. He said, no, 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 Jane. But, you know, at the moment, it's, um, it's really trendy to kind of not have a white background, but have kind of a natural looking one. So I tried the natural look, but... The problem with this natural cork, lovely wooden background is that it's the same color as my skin and my hair. So it looked like this kind of beige, <laughs> nothingness, this little a little, clashing a bit with the banner. So when you have your profile picture, make sure that you stand out and also that you don't clash with your banner, which Elise is going to talk a little bit more about now. Yeah. And, and Jane, you're so right. I mean, I've looked at so many, I mean, I, I had a, I looked at a profile picture the one day and I, I trust that the, the individual might have been a professional golfer because, you know, she was clearly teeing and, and her cap was down here and I, I couldn't see her face. And, you know, it, you could see she was on the golf course, I, I assume. But, you know, it, it's so important what you're saying from, from a profile pic. And I, I come across profiles you know, every day where there's no photograph and there's no differentiation from a background point of view. And we're talking about branding here. We're talking about differentiation. Um, you know, if you're a job seeker and you are looking for a job, employers have got choice today. They have got so many. I mean, if you're recruiters that are sitting here today, you know this. Um, you've got choice to be selective. So back to the three seconds, if I come across your profile through a search or you know, I find content and I click on your profile, you've got a very small window in which to make a difference and to make an impression on me. And so this, obviously the photograph, but the background, I mean, if we look at the three examples that I'm sharing on the slide, you know, we've got the beautiful standard LinkedIn, you know, background, but that's a, everybody has that. That's what LinkedIn gives everybody. So, you know, if you're looking to differentiate yourself, get creative, um, you know, have some fun with your background. Um, it can be very time consuming too, though. Um, I've had clients going, gosh, you know, Elise, I spent four hours trying to find a background that really resonated with my brand. And I eventually got so confused. Um, but, you know, there's different um, sources and, and love to hear you guys in terms of, you know, ideas and, and comments and what you've found in terms of sourcing backgrounds. But, you know, you can Google free LinkedIn backgrounds and, and there's sort of images that are made available there. Um, you know, another option is really sort of putting your professional strengths, your key competencies into, into Google possibly and, and searching for free images there. 
Pinterest, possibly Canva. I mean, there's so many different options to look at background. You can certainly go to um, a graphic designer and have a graphic designer. A lot of clients um, do that as well. Um, but, you know, really differentiate yourself. Really look at that background. Again, I see so many profiles where I, I just want to kind of move on because there's nothing that's really hooked me on that individual's profile. And if that's me, and if you're a job seeker, as an example, or a, a professional or an industry professional or a recruiter, you know, whatever your, your profession is, it might not stick. Um, so, so the banner, the background is so important. Um, interesting mm -hmm. enough, the little, just to give an example, the individual, the, the banner with the little Lego block, um, that particular uh, profile is a, an analyst and she's a chemical engineer. Um, but she's an engineer by, um, by graduate, she's graduated as an engineer. And that's interesting, that's, that's what she's associated and that's the banner that she's actually gone with. So um, lots mm -hmm. and lots of options out there and I really highly recommend um, if you don't have a differentiation on your banner today, if you're in this session, please, that's something you must pay attention to as quickly as possible. It's, mm -hmm. it's really, really important. Um, yeah, the next point. one- And the size, Elise, you were, you were talking about the size earlier. Yeah, look, I think it's, um, I think two things there, thanks Jane. I think one, don't just set on one banner because back to your point around your photograph, your heart is set on a particular banner and then you go and load it, it fits beautifully and, and then you blend it, you camouflage into the back of the banner and it really doesn't stand out. So, you know, select two or three banners that you can, you, you, you look at. So in terms of the banners, 1400 by 425 pixels, um, but I think that's, you know, you, 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 sometimes the banners that you do select when you're just going and, and picking up images um, won't necessarily fit really nicely. So when you, you embed them and you, you add them, you know, they might cut off key information from that perspective. So, so really look at um, making sure that you try and get the banner as close as possible to the allocation. And I think that's why LinkedIn, you know, made it available to the audience by Googling free LinkedIn backgrounds and giving you a really sized banners um, just to make it easy for, for, um, for the audience, for their members to, to select from that point of view. Um, so yeah, I mean, a, a great way is obviously to go to somebody, um, um, have it professionally done if you can afford to do that. It's, it's, it's a great way to do it that way. But, you know, there are sources and there, you know, if you're good with editing, um, it's quite easy to edit images and, and work with the images and get it to the right size. Um, so mm. yeah, just have some fun and, and, and play with it from that perspective. The other, the other tip, um, which I picked up, I'm not going to take credit, but I picked it up from influencers um, internationally. It's a trend that I'm picking up um, certainly from, from um, uh, influencers overseas is really putting um, some differentiation behind your name. And again, to James, I didn't want to just pick up um, anybody's profile. So I've just used mine as an example. Um, but again, back to brand differentiation, um, I've simply gone and, and added career coach behind my name. Um, I've left my just, uh, FYI, I've left my maiden name, Ron Quest, there because um, I only remarried last year. I mean, I'll take it away at some point in time, but I've got a lot of people that know me as Ron Quest. So that's the only reason why I've left my maiden name um, there. Um, but essentially, the, the second um, little screen, the, the example that I've shown below, um, you can see the power of that. If somebody is moving through your profile, as they scroll down your profile, immediately my name is associated with a function or it is associated mm -hmm. with something that I want, to, I want you to remember me as. And so this could be, I've put the function career coach, it could be um, executive, it could be project leader. So it could be a function, but it also could be a competency. Um, the, uh, a client of mine has put analyst behind her name as an example. So every time, for example, I am now communicating, I am contributing towards conversations, um, you don't just see my name, career coach is sitting behind. So every time there's that brand association that hopefully my brand, Elise McCabe, mm -hmm. is associated with career coach. Um, so it's a really nice tip. It's, it's, uh, it's really up to you if you want to do it. Um, um, there's no right and wrong way with it, but it's just something else that, that may help you from a branding perspective 
for your time. Yeah, I love it, Elise, because I think even, um, you know, if I'm commenting on a post and I tag Elise, then it's not just her name that comes up, but it's Elise McCabe, career coach. So it's everywhere. You know, you can't not think of Elise without that. So I think it's a brilliant tip. Thank you. And isn't that with branding, you're wanting to sort of have that affirmation so that you're top of mind, right, in certain things. So, you know, hopefully, you know, it does have some impact, but that's the intention. And it's a great tip for, for all of you to consider if you haven't done that already. Mm, totally. You just can't change your um, career too often. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, that's, so that's where sometimes it's great to have a differentiator. So maybe a professional strength rather than a function. So yes. again, you know, what is your value to your client? What is your value to your future employer? What is your differentiator? I mean, so when you mm. start to look at all of those, you know, your headline, your banner, um, you know, your, um, your name, those are starting to sort of create this brand impact in terms of your client or your future employer. Mm, love it. And I think, Elise, something else, you know, you mentioned about leaving Ronquest in. Um, there was a client that I spoke to the other day and he has a name, say, for example, Antonio, but people don't call him Antonio. They call him Tony. And yeah. so what we advise him to do is then he has Antonio in brackets or, you know, Tony, because we don't know what are people going to search for him under Antonio or Tony, because some people don't know his other name. So it's, it's really important to think through what people know you as. And, and really good point. I mean, I've got a client and when I first, as we all do, you find a name and we jump onto LinkedIn and we start to look at the profile and her name was Nicolette. And here I am on LinkedIn searching for Nicolette and I'm getting zero results. I can't find it because she's known as Nikki. So yes. again, we did exactly the same thing as people know her as Nikki and we've just put Nikki in brackets. So um, absolutely. How are people going to search for you? What are they going to, what are you known as? Um, mm -hmm. Very important. Another one quickly, Jane, is I find sometimes people get the naming standard wrong you know, their, their surname and first name is the wrong way around. Um, I found that quite often as well. And that can be difficult to find a profile. And also watch the capital letters. Um, you know, the case sensitivity, I think, throughout your LinkedIn profile, the professionalism of your branding, full stops. I mean, we're going to, I'm sure you'll cover that when we talk about the other sections. But, you know, the grammar, the full stops, the case sensitivity is so important. Again, it's your brand. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure it's portraying the best of you. Um, yeah. and, and there's so many profiles that I look at where those little details are not taken into consideration. And that might, that might put somebody off. That little thing yeah. can actually deter somebody. Mm, totally. So we've got that somebody is looking, they land on your page. They're going to see your photo. They're going to see your banner. They're going to look at your name. And then they're going to look at your heading. And this was something I actually had to wrestle with over COVID because I had a couple of people say to me after a couple of months of lockdown and say, you know what, Jane, we've noticed you're really busy on social media, which is fantastic. We see busyness, we see energy, we see involvement, but we're not always sure exactly what you do. And I think probably a lot of us weren't sure exactly what we do. <laughs> and I was doing things that I thought, okay, this isn't normally my recruitment training that I normally do in my recruitment coaching. But I had to think, what is, what is, as you know, as a feeding of what Elise was saying just now, what is my strength? What is, my, where do I add value? So I'm not just a trainer or a facilitator or a coach, but it's where is the area of expertise where I can really add value. So that's where I landed on talent engagement expert, because my expertise is around how to coach recruiters through the, the whole candidate engagement process, the whole candidate experience, and then candidates going through that from their perspective. So how to help top talent and organizations engage with one another in a very magnetic, positive, caring, respectful, professional way. So that's where I landed on that with, with the help from some friends, Alzette and Kelly and Vanessa and, you know, people, people in, in my life, collaborators, um, Celeste, all sorts of people. So I've kept the trainer, but I've, what I've done is I've got the, the um, pipes, the vertical pipes 
um, put it, you know, in, in between the different areas because of the search engine optimization. That if someone is, is looking for talent or talent acquisition or trainer or career or coach or speaker, all of those things will come up. And then you might think, Ghostbuster, what in the world is that? So the trend on LinkedIn has become almost, I mean, some people call it the professional Facebook, but the trend has become more and more to create curiosity and put something personal. And it was so interesting because um, Elise and I were actually having this conversation around having something in your, in your, um, in your heading that creates curiosity. And that same day, I got a message from a connection that you'll see on the right hand side. I'm curious, Ghostbuster, there must be a story there. So you can see I've, I've answered it, I've answered it there with what the story is. But um, my husband, for example, has Yoda because people, um, people even who don't know him introduce him as this is the wisest person I know and he loves philosophy and psychology and coaching. Um, I know Vanessa who's with us who's his head cheerleader. I don't know if it's yeah, head cheerleader, it. but she's yeah. always, you know, that's, that's her. So it's about saying not just my job title, but what do I want people to engage with me on? That's what needs to be there. Maybe, you know, for me, I have my own business, so I want my email address there. I want it to be easy for people to contact me. Mm. Um, even if you click on contact information, you want to make sure that people can actually contact you. There's been so many people that I tried to contact and you go into contact information and you think, okay, you want me to contact you, but there's nothing there to contact you on. So really important. Um, and then something I was actually speaking to someone the other day, they'd started their own business um, and they have a LinkedIn page for it. But the little icon where you can see where mine says out of box thinking there, um, they just had the little gray block. So again, yeah. for the visual, for the first impression, you want that to pull through. So they've got their LinkedIn page. They need to be able to go into the edit on their skills and experience, type that in and see that icon pull through just for that visual effect. And it looks a lot more professional. Absolutely. So there's great. a few tips on the heading. So please, any tips that you have on headings or things, again, it's something personal. Um, everyone's doesn't have to be the same. Please just add into the chat box what, um, what your tips and tricks are on that. And Jane, so Elise, you know, I love this pit, the, the open no, to work, which is also part of the, that first impression bit. It is, and I think that's it. I think, um, again, so many profiles I look at, and you know, individuals are not utilizing the power of that headline. And I see, you know, name and I see I'm looking for a job or I'm open to new opportunities. Um, it's not, they're not utilizing that section, that headline to really differentiate them and tell their target audience what they do. And, and not utilizing the open to work. But bearing in mind, it, it might be a case that because I am not a recruiter, um, the individuals might have enabled the open to work um, and I can't see it because it's only available to recruiters. So really a big tip um, to anybody that is in the job market and looking for, for work, make sure you enable this open to work functionality, but you know, be very mindful of, of who you letting see it. So if you are able to publicly put it out there that you are in the job market, then make it available to all LinkedIn users. Absolutely, why wouldn't you? Um, but if you are um, confidentially in the job market, then make sure that you're only letting recruiters know um, because it could be awkward. And I, I had that, I had a client the other day and I said, you know, um, aren't you confidentially in the market? And she said, yeah, absolutely. And I said, oh, when I jump on your profile, <laughs> there in front of me as you're open to work. So, you know. Especially with the green circle. Oh, no, she had this open to work functionality. Oh, okay. and never mind the green circle. But, um, but the risk is, I mean, some employers we know that are quite sensitive um, to that. Um, not everybody is open-minded to um, and transparent from that point of view. So you need to be mindful here. You know, the other thing is that uh, again, another example, I saw a profile the other day where this open to work indicated that the person was looking for a role as a business analyst, junior business analyst. But there was nowhere in the work experience or in the profile that 
led me to know or to be aware that this person had that experience. There was nothing saying to me that this person had experience, had qualification, had the ability. And so there was a disconnect between the profile. You're telling me that you're looking for this job, but there's nowhere in your profile that you're demonstrating that you have the ability to do that. So again, you know, we're walking through these sections because hopefully you'll realize how important they all are. These are very basic functionality um, are within LinkedIn that is so important. Um, mm. So yeah, really make sure that you um, are really mindful of, of what you're adding here. And, and again, I think the one thing is, you know, with the open to work, it's, it's picking up job titles that LinkedIn recognizes. So they either exist in LinkedIn or um, they've been posted because I know I'm an, I'm an outplacement specialist and I've actually tried to um, incorporate not in the open to work, but in terms of the, um, the services that I offer and I can't add that. So, you know, sometimes it won't always give you the perfect job title. Um, but that's where, you know, Jane, you're going to be talking about the about section. We're going to mm. be talking through the experience, which will then also um, highlight your ability, skills, competencies, et cetera. If it doesn't mm. necessarily talk directly to the, the actual job title, because we know job titles today um, can mean different things, right? And they are changing job titles today. So, you know, maybe the job title that we are looking for doesn't exist. We can't specifically um, tell our audience what it is that we're looking for. It's a very real situation that, that the individual might be faced with in that space. Mm. Yeah, I agree with you, Elise. And I think people can bring what they're looking for and what they're interested in into their about section. So the about section flows on from your heading. Um, it talks about what value you can add. So I think something that I always talk through people about before they write their about section is to think about okay what are my values what's what am i passionate about what value do i want to add can people see that in my about section can they see a personality can they see you know a person there or is it just facts and i want to connect with clients so it's not just about me it's about thinking, what are my clients' needs? Mm. What are they interested in? Because if I'm going to hook them right from the start, which is what I need to do if I want them to read on, remember we've got that three seconds, they've looked at your photo, your banner, whatever, now they're gonna read that first line of your about section. If you're gonna hook them, it has to hook them in a way that talks to something that they're interested in and that they care about. So again, it goes back to that whole principle that LinkedIn is founded on in terms of sharing content that people care about. And I think that, I think that a lot of people say to me is, Jane, this is just so awkward. How do I talk about myself in a way that sells me, but without sounding like I'm being arrogant or boastful? Yeah. And I hear you. I feel like I struggle with the very same thing. I think, you know, a lot of us do. But I think I, I chose these two examples because I think they do it so well. So the first example is um, from someone who was on a recent program with me around career transition. And I just wanna make a note and tell you here, she said she just had like two lines before. And going through this actually took her two to three days. So don't underestimate how long it takes to write something that really speaks to, to what you want to say. So I've got that as an example. And then there's another one. I know um, Lindsay Sure, I know, um, you know, Elise will know and Judy will know from DAV days. But um, I love her about section. And I've often said to her, oh, Lindsay, can I please use this as an example because I just love it. So I think the thing that they do really well, where you see the little scrolls, is they talk about themselves, but not in just a way of listing their strengths. I am this, I am inquisitive, I have a thirst for learning. Um, I have worked with and led diverse and talented teams. They've brought it into a story and the whole trend now is around storytelling. So my inquisitive nature and thirst for learning. So my, it's a belief that drives my 100% success rate for Lindsay. So they're bringing in their strengths so that you absorb them in a more interested and credible way because it's part of a story. Now, we're not 
giving away all our IP and all our company secrets and secret projects. So you're not doing that, but you're talking to what you've done and what you've achieved, but saying things like I've had the fortune of, or I've had the privilege of where the stars are. It makes it just sound less arrogant, less boastful. Like I've done this really good thing, but aren't I lucky? I'm just really grateful that I've been able to do that. And then the little magnifying glasses are just kind of highlighting how to get in contact with this person. So Lindsay is being very direct, please make contact, but it's been very clear about what she wants you to make contact about. And the other person put in her specialties, specifically because she didn't mention those key words in her about section. You don't want to make it too long, but if people are searching, she wants them to be able to find her profile if they're searching along those keywords. I think one more um, point that I can never stress often enough in sales is that it's so much more credible when someone else sells you than if you try to sell yourself. And I think that's the whole social trust, especially around our millennials and Gen Zs and the success of places like Glassdoor is people want to go and first hear what does everyone else say about you? And we'll talk about that a little bit more with recommendations. But I love how these people have brought that into their about section. I am often told my passion and energy. My peers and clients have also shared. Clients and candidates trust me. So that's so much more credible than them saying, I am passionate. I provide this and that. I am an expert. So I know that this isn't a short section. There's so much more we could talk about with about. And sometimes it's really helpful just to get somebody in your life who's a really good writer and who can help you articulate your value add because it's not always easy to do. But those are just a couple of, of, of tips and tricks on that. And I think if you can get people interested in that, then you can get them to read your experience and skill section, which Elise is going to share about. Yeah, absolutely, Jane. I mean, it's such a powerful... Um, powerful section because you know sometimes I know back to the three seconds you know that section up to there is where we stop um, mm -hmm. get my attention and if I'm interested then I'll read more and I might come back to your profile for more so you know if you if you've hooked me now then I'll worry about your experience and skills later um, but yes I, I, again I don't think enough people put enough emphasis into into the experience section um, and again, we've got two possible markets here. We've got, you know, a, a profile that's talking to clients and the value and experience that I bring to my clients. Um, so again, what is it the value? Um, you don't necessarily need to in, in, incorporate all your uh, key responsibilities, um, you know, but inevitably like a CV, we often don't tell our audience what it is we actually do. We think we've got to go straight into roles and responsibilities. Um, and no, there is a difference. You know, you can, again, back to your pitch, you know, if you're managing people or you, you're managing a staff complement, you know, how many people, what are the teams, what is the, what is the department you might be responsible for managing? So this is where I think the overview sometimes is probably more important than the responsibilities. Because um, the responsibilities, if I'm a job seeker and I'm applying for a job, that will certainly come through in, in terms of the CV when I apply for the position. Yes, I mean, obviously, there's key words that are going to come through in terms of um, the LinkedIn profile that I might be searching on. So obviously, we've got to think about, you know, the, the search engine optimization or the algorithms of LinkedIn in terms of keywords and making sure all the keywords that you want to be associated with are covered here. But I think key points, um, overview, tell me what it is you do. What, it, what, what is your portfolio responsible for? Uh, again, without compromising IP, you know, achievements. Remember your profile is around differentiation to your clients or to your future employer. So you've got to think again, your heading or your headline, your about section, your experience and skills. How, how am I using those to differentiate me? How am I using these sections to make sure that I stand out from my competitors? So it might be including um, some achievements. It might be including career highlights or, or, or job highlights or work highlights. It might be a for our graduates, if there's any graduates in the group, you know, they might not necessarily have a lot of experience or a lot of responsibilities. You might have done a, a learnership program or a graduate program. 
it might be a key takeaway. What was the learning experience that you actually took away from that particular role? It might have been a two-month learnership. What was the key takeaway that you took away from that that you can possibly add value to your future employer? Um, so really think about the differences that you can bring. Jane, earlier you, you mentioned around the linkage to the company. Um, again, so many people don't do that. Um, so um, if you've got a business, make sure that you've got a company, if you've got a company profile that you've linked to that company profile. If you've worked for a particular brand, make sure that you're pulling up that particular brand as your employer and there's the proper link there. It just, again, moves away from that little gray, gray block and just makes it a lot more professional from that point of view. And then your skills and endorsements. I mean, this just as an example here, I know that LinkedIn, um, if you haven't reworked your skills section, um, it will pin the top three skills based on endorsements. And that may not totally be correct. Um, a lot of people may have endorsed you for certain skills that maybe were re relevant a year ago or two years ago, but are not relevant now. And yet it's sitting as your, one of your top three skills. So go reevaluate your skills section. Look at what are your top three skills that you want to be identified with um, and make sure that that's um, uh, you know, set up by yourself and make sure that you populate your skills section. Um, again, these are all key words that um, recruiters and employers and, and people, you know, if I'm running a search at the moment, I'm looking for content, or I'm looking for, you know, these, this might be, um, you know, keywords that I'm actually searching to find you or find content and so forth. So, you know, make sure um, that you're populating this section as much as possible. And again, with skills that are relevant now, and that you want to be associated with, don't put skills there that, you know, for me as an example to, for my profile, just to be set up with recruitment, I don't want to, I'm not going to go back into the recruitment industry. I'm not going to go back and start recruiting. So I might have had those skills before, but they're not skills that I necessarily want to be identified with today. So you can remove skills. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a document that's cast in stone or a section that's cast in stone. Use it to your advantage. Use it to let it help. This section is important. It's about helping you in terms of your value proposition, your differentiation, um, if you're a job seeker to be found, um, you know, from an algorithm point of view, again, LinkedIn is an, has got AI and algorithms built into it. So therefore the word association with your brand becomes so important. And I know you're gonna be talking a little bit more around um, the algorithm and everything just now, Jane. Um, and there's a lot, I mean, there's so much um, that can be spoken around the algorithm and and keywords and hashtags and, and, and all of that. Um, but those are just a, a few tips that I find, again, looking at profiles that are really um, not given the attention um, um, to these sections. It's just an area that's really overlooked. Now, I hear you, Elise, and I think um, as you're saying that, I'm thinking there is so much to say and share and learn. And, you know, we could, we could do this all day, I'm, I'm sure all of us, and we'd, we'd still not run out of tips and tricks but just for time's sake, I'm not going to spend too long here, but just building on what Elise was saying about make sure your skills that are mentioned are recent and are relevant. The same goes for your recommendations. I try to make sure that every time I do a piece of work, I get recent recommendations on what I've just done. Because otherwise, people are going to look at my recommendations and think, okay, that's great that you did that 10 years ago, but what has she been doing recently? Did anyone find value in that? So I think that's really important. And I think that the, the, thing, the thing about the recommendations area is it goes back to that sales principle of what people say about you builds more credibility than if you say it about yourself. So it's wonderful if you find, you know, people you've reported to, people you've worked with, people where you've added value, just ask them for a recommendation and ask many people because there's many people you ask who don't respond, they don't see it, they forget, whatever the case may be. So ask 10, 20 people and, um, and you'll see that you will get some. But, but yeah, love, love the recommendation section. And, and Jane, I think the, the um, recommendations carry a lot more credibility than endorsements because yeah. endorsements um, is a click function. I mean, it's important if we've worked together, we've done business together to be endorsed for a particular skill. But 
anybody can just click and endorse you for anything. And uh, I know I've had people that have endorsed me for something and I, I go, gosh, you don't even know. I, you don't even know me. You don't know that I've actually got that particular skill. So thanks. But, you know, in my Absolutely. mind, it, carry, it doesn't carry the credibility. So um, definitely the, but again, we, it has value. Um, but I think the recommendations are like your online references. They character references, right? Yes. Totally. Um, and back to the trust factor that you spoke about. I mean, people are looking and paying more and more attention to recommendations. It can be a swing vote. Um, in terms of a decision, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So at okay, least tell so, us about interests. We're going to run yeah. out of time. Yes. Yeah, so we need to move on. And I think we're nearly done. But let's quickly, just a, a, a quick tip on this. And I think um, very quickly, two points here is really um, groups and companies. Um, a lot of, we find a lot of people don't even follow their own companies. Guys, you're ambassadors for your own organizations. And it's important to to certainly do that, but also maybe you are in the job market and you're looking um, to make a transition. Um, start to identify future employers and um, start to engage and start to follow companies that you would like to work for. Even if it's not now, it might be in the future. Groups look based on industry. Um, it's a great way to get your brand recognized, start to participate in groups, start to converse in groups, um, and it's, it's, it, it's a great way to, to um, start having an opinion and start to be recognized possibly as a thought leader. So again, if you're that individual that, that really wants to be identified as, as a thought leader, as a specialist in your field, you know, it's not only about the activity in the public domain, but it's also starting to look to belong to certain groups and starting to, to participate there. So look at that. I think those are, are really the, the, the key points that I wanted to speak about today. Hmm, great points. Thanks very much. Good tips. Thanks, Elise. So you mentioned a little bit earlier that we were going to talk about the algorithms. And this is just one of my favorite topics. I think I'm just, I don't know if I'm a gamer at heart, not that I even play games. But anyway, <laughs> but it's just um, incredible to be able to understand what LinkedIn is built on. And then to be able to understand how it works, because I think, as I say to so many people, they come up with great content and they've got an amazing profile and they write incredible articles or they, they produce these beautiful videos and it takes hours, but then who sees them? Yeah. And I think it's so important to understand the algorithm and to be able to coax the algorithm so that it's not just out of, you know, gamifying and we don't actually care, we're just putting it out there. It's really to be able to get what you, what you want to add in front of the right people. So someone was actually messaged me this week and said, oh, Jane, you know, I just find, find that I'm, I'm spending a lot of time on my content, but I feel like I'm not connecting with the people that I want to connect with. So again, this is a topic that many people speak about and we could spend hours on it. But let's talk about the main points. So we talked about in the beginning how LinkedIn is a sticky platform. It wants people to stay there. It doesn't want you to just move in and move out. So it rewards the people who stay. So what makes people stay? Content that you care about. Remember, there was a great webinar that I listened to a while back, uh, one of Hung Lee's recruiting brain food ones where he was interviewing Andy Foote and Victoria Rush. And I'll never forget them saying, you know, the two things that you've got to have if you want to get your posts in front of the right people is great content and a great tribe. So you've got to have the content that people care about, that people are interested in. So good content and in a format that people want to engage with. I think, especially during this time, somebody sent me something last night. It was a, um, a link to something and it was, you know, 450 ways to whatever, whatever. And I just thought, I don't even know if I can even open that because my brain is just so full of information and there's so many webinars. And so we're really yeah. grateful for everyone who's here. And I mean, there's so much information. What are people engaging with? So it, it was articles and I think short, brilliant articles like, you know, I can't stop talking about Manolas, but love hers. That's something short and it's a little bite-sized chunk that people can engage with. It's quick, it's an easy read. Don't write long stuff. 
people also love images. And, and again, you know, in the beginning, stock images were wonderful. But what people really love is an authentic image. I think my most successful post was one which was a video. And I didn't mean to be recording, but it just happened that while I was training people, they were amazing. What an amazing client. They gave me a surprise appreciation at the end of the program. And, um, and so I was actually recording somebody interviewing and then suddenly my husband walked in with flowers and everyone arrived on the screen and I just burst into tears. But I thought, let me just share it because they're amazing and it's authentic. Yeah. And I find people like that. They want to see who you really are. They're not just interested in the facade. This, I think we've got more real over COVID. You know, we're, we're beyond that. We know that we're all real people. And people want to know you as the real person. They want to connect with you. You still want to remain professional, but you want to be authentic. So videos, not long videos, maybe one, two minutes at the most. Bite-sized pieces of advice. So people can, um, someone said, I loved something, you know, that you wrote because it was, quick and factual and I felt like I came away having learned something and I thought hmm, okay that's a point to remember people don't want to read long stuff on LinkedIn and they want you, they need to come away feeling like you've added value to them they spent their time well there and then you yourself if you want people to follow you it's very reciprocal you need to follow them like their stuff comment on their stuff so where LinkedIn rewards even more is actually not through the likes. So the likes, the claps, the loves, you know, they're all there and they're wonderful. But you'll see LinkedIn even prompts you now with words that you can say in a comment because it so badly wants you to stay there and spend more time making a comment than just a like where you move on. So make comments and in your comments, as Vanessa will also always say, tag people. And the algorithm works in this way. If you post something, the algorithm is attentive to that post within the first hour of you posting it. If there's interest in that post within the first hour, shown through comments, shown through your community, then it'll continue to grow. If there isn't interest in that post for the first hour, it can be the most amazing content. But if you have no tribe, the algorithm drops it so heartbreaking and i see people have created beautiful videos and boop, there it's yeah, gone. nothing yeah so it's almost like sometimes i feel like it's i mean maybe this is <laughs> I don't know if everyone's given birth but you feel like you've given birth to this child for one day but the algorithm looks at it for the first hour and then the first day so you've got to nurture that post for the first day if you want it to grow and then as elise said you've also got to make sure you use the right hashtags um, LZ always talks about hashtagify me as a wonderful site to be able to find out what hashtags are trending. Um, and you know, ask questions um, that, that, get, that get people to engage and answer. Um, mention breaking news, publish, publish links to things, but be careful because LinkedIn also doesn't like links that take you off the site. So if you're going to publish a link to another place off and outside of LinkedIn, do it in your comments and not in your actual post. And then last of all, think about the times. Again, you know, there's so much to say, but this was interesting to me in terms of when there's the lowest and highest engagement, but this was from October last year. And I've been speaking to different people and saying, what have you noticed about engagement and when people engage? And this is what I've come up with, is people are saying, you know, funny enough, we're finding a lot of it on a Monday. And please put your comments in the chat box as to when you find people are engaging, engaging the most. A lot more people seem to be engaging in the evening. Yeah. And Friday afternoon, I don't know what happened to that. <laughs> Nobody is around. But I think on the people weekend, are exhausted. Yeah, I'm just exhausted. <laughs> yeah, I've had it. But they're back on, on, on the Saturday and the Sunday for some reason. Yeah. So that's what I found. But please, you know, please do share what works for you. Anything you want to add to that, Elise, before we go no, on to your final tip? Jane, I, th I think move on, but I think you're right. We were talking about that, and I think it's just, it, it's changed. And I think COVID has changed the habit and, and the activity, and, and I think we're all seeing that at the moment. Um, so, yeah, we'd love to find out what people have picked up in terms of their trends. I know I'm seeing, you know, it was always internationally that I would be getting um, engagement at, at some crazy hours, but I'm, 
I'm finding that my community are working well into the night. And that is a worry because we've got to be so mindful of burnout and time out and, you know, this yeah. whole work-life balance kind of thing, which, which COVID is really disrupting. Um, okay, well, let's move on. We, we, we're obviously mindful of time. Just quickly, I think the last um, quick point that we really wanted to share and close off on was really just talking around, um, you know, a couple of points around privacy and settings. So before jumping onto this one, I find that a lot of people don't pay attention to switching off the notifications when they're updating and making, making changes to their profiles. So I've had a number of cases where I've had people reach out to me going, oh, Elise, help. I made a change to my updated my job title and I've been doing the same job for the last five years and everybody's congratulating me because people don't read. I, I'm very deliberate. I will go and see if I see a notification, there's a change. I go and look at the person's profile and make sure it's 100 before I just go into this, congratulations, woohoo, yay, well done. Um, but it can be quite embarrassing. And then, you, you know, it, it, I mean, it could have its pros because suddenly you're getting um, traffic. But um, just be mindful and switch off the notification. Be, be um, tactical, be strategic around what notifications you want your audience to see and what they don't. Um, so just look at that setting. It's quite easy to just um, make that change. Um, and the other thing which I just wanted to highlight, and obviously you need to look at this section and decide whether it's beneficial for you or it's going to count against you. So it depends on how your profile is optimized in terms of keywords. But when you look at your profile page, on the right-hand side of your profile, you will see a notification that of other profiles that have been viewed. That is generally based on similar profiles to yours. So it could be competitors to you. Again, you obviously wanting to attract an audience um, and for people to stay on your page. You don't want to give them your competitors, whether you're a job seeker or have a business. You don't want to direct them to another recruiter or another business or um, another job seeker that's also a business analyst. Um, so just look at this particular section here and really look at that and say, do I want to make that information available to my network or not? It's your choice. Mm -hmm. um, I was with a client the other day, just quickly, we looked at her profile and what was brilliant for the purposes there is a company she had identified that she wanted, that was on her company wish list that she wanted to work for. There was the director who was a really good go-to person for that particular company. So it suddenly gave her um, a, a contact person that she could engage with. But that was perfect, but the rest she didn't want because it was all her competitors. And um, so, you know, there's no right and wrong. I think just be mindful of what that section does and um, you may want to switch it off. Um, I know in working with a lot of clients, when they look at that and we look at that, we go, mm, maybe it's a notification. We actually want to switch off so that when I'm on your profile, I'm focused just on you and nobody mm -hmm. else. Okay, so that yeah. was just, you know, just two tips just to, to be mindful on the, on, on the privacy settings. Mm, um, love that, thanks Elise. So I know we, we want to, we've got two minutes left and we want to dive into our chat box. And as you know, there is so much we can share. So please do connect with us. Um, we'd love to talk more. We'd love to, you know, share more. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, and so diving into the chat box, if you have any questions, let us know. But I love what <laughs> Kelly is saying that her engagements are highest at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. <laughs> Oh, wow, Kelly, well done for being up at 11 p.m. on your LinkedIn. So excellent. And I know Alzette also has some excellent tips that she can share. She actually made a little video of this. So Alzette Faree, please do post the link um, to your video because it's not just about LinkedIn. It's also about Facebook and Instagram yeah. and all of the other sites. So I know we've only really talked about, about LinkedIn today. But yeah, anything you want to... Um, in the in the chat, um, I'm just trying to see if there's anything yeah, there. Just, also, just going through it just to see as well. Um, Love this. Yeah. So please do stay for chat, um, and that you can you know you can be able to take those tips and tricks. And we will be recording it. We have recorded it, so we will be able to share that with you as well. Sure, Elise. It's two o'clock. Can you believe I it? I know. I know. <laughs> just. You know what, I think everybody will relate. There's so much, I mean, you know, when you're doing, you know, there's just so much information. Um, we've just touched on, on LinkedIn. We haven't even looked at any other social media and around yeah. branding. But these were, what we, we discussed was just the fundamentals that we find 
the basics. You know, these yes, are really yes. just the basics. And, and by just making these little changes can make a huge impact to one's brand. And it's really good to just sometimes take a step back and reflect and relook at it and reevaluate. But, you know, you know how to get hold of us. Um, connect if we're not connected. Certainly with me, if we're not connected, please let's connect. Um, my contact details are all available under my contact information. So um, not hiding, it's easy for me to, to um, be reached, um, to reach out to me. So please, please engage. And if yeah. there's any other questions, I mean, we can certainly keep the discussion offline um, going and have a chat. And if there's any assistance that's needed, Jane, we're here to help. I mean, you know, Absolutely. at the end of the day, that's why we, why we wanted to do this. We wanted to just give a little bit back and share, you know, just some of our experiences, right? Mm. Absolutely. So thank you so much. Thanks, Elise. And thank you so much to everyone who's joined. Um, I love the tips and, and the comments that people are sharing and have shared. Um, yeah, Elise and I, you know, very happy to continue to connect with you. Um, please do join the Touch Base Facebook group if you'd like to hear about more events. And yeah, I'm so glad everyone enjoyed it as much as we did. So enjoy the rest of your day. And we look forward to connecting again. Mm -hmm.